You there? Hello? Hello? Hey. Hey, So, uh, I turned my camera on so I can have a conversation with you. Okay, so it's recording right now? Oh, yeah, it's recording right now. Okay, cool. So, your contention is that you, uh, caught Aldous and I abusing the child. No. No? The, the, what I did with that video is I showed that you can say someone's a child abuser, then kind of twist it around and make it really seem like they are. So ah. that's kind of what you did with me. I'm a child abuser because I'm a Christian, even though you don't really know, you know what I'm talking about, and you say it, and it feels bad. Just sort of like, you're not really abusing the child, but saying it in a certain tone makes it feel bad. And I went through a lot of stress when you did that to me. Uh -huh. Since I've got, not gotten as much emotionally attached to the video, so it doesn't really bother me. But for you to say that and then upload content, which even could be considered like that, mm -hmm. seems a little hypocritical. Okay. Well, okay. I think I understand where you're coming from now. Where I'm coming from, as far as saying that you are uh, party to the abuse of children, is really, uh, I'm not calling it your fault that it is. I mean, it's like uh, the, the cycle of violence when parents, you know, teach kids how to be violent, and then when those kids grow, grow up, you know, they basically raise their children how they were raised, you know, and it is part of your religion that sin gets taught. And I know that you're saying that you don't teach about hell and you don't teach about sin. And I'm wondering, like, what do you teach in youth group? And if you're not teaching about hell and sin, are you teaching that those don't exist? Because, you know, you've got to teach them that Christ died on the cross for them, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's like, you can't you can't get around that. But, well, it's, it's not really, it's, it's, it's a matter of, um, we have a discussion group, and then we have youth groups. A lot of times, like, for example, this week a youth group, and I'm probably getting out too much, but I mean, it is relevant, but... For this week for youth group, we're not actually having a lesson. We're going to somewhere as a Christian artist. Uh, a lot of weeks for youth group, we'll do something. We have a food pantry at the church. That will be the youth project. Or one week, we wrote letters to people who used to go to youth group who graduated college. So the majority of the time, it's not a lesson. Mm -hmm. The majority of the time, it's something like that. But when I do, um, it'll be, I mean, it will be just basic Christian ideas. And giving out some of my ideas that might not be orthodox because I do have the church that I work at is a very conservative church mm -hmm. puts me and this is a problem that I have personally it, 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 it puts my job in jeopardy well, so that's, this is a side issue but it, you know is it ethical to be working in a position where if you came out with certain beliefs it might put your job in jeopardy but um, I'm not convinced that there is a physical health but I am convinced from my own personal experience that a uh, relationship with Jesus Christ helps us in this life. Okay. Um, so it's more about, I feel that Jesus didn't die so much for the next life as he did for this one. So if we do, when we do have discussions, we kind of talk more about that and focus on more of what we can do in this life as opposed to trying to manipulate the system to get into the next one. Mm-hmm. Here's where I really don't see uh, letting you off the hook, as it were, as somebody who is still as guilty as any other person who might teach these children about hell. If you teach them that Christ died on the cross for them, that's something that they probably heard in 
you know, all the way from the little toddler youth group, you know, on up to the age that you deal with. And it's reinforcing the entire uh, education or spiritual education that they've received in the church. So, like, when you say that Christ died on the cross for them, they know that he died for their sins, you know. And he did so before they were even born, you know. They're, they're not stupid, you know. Right. Just because you weren't the one that told them that doesn't mean that the things that you are telling them isn't reinforcing the rest of what they know. Um, so, I mean, I guess, though, I mean, I can't, like, I can't be held accountable for what they're taught outside of when, I, when I'm when i there with them. And a lot, pretty, we have maybe two or three kids in the youth group who actually go to my church. The majority, they either go to different churches or they just, they don't go to church at all. They go because it's like a social thing and they have fun. Yeah, so, I, I mean, know all about that. Whatever happens outside of youth group, I have no control over it. So... Whatever mm -hmm. they come with, they, they come with. And, you know, a lot of them have different ideas. I mean, they're all individuals. Some of them, like I said, come because it's a social thing, or there'll be a girl who will be, you know, the new girlfriend to one of the youth, and she'll be there until that relationship fizzles out or whatever. There are some who love it and who go and who have certain ideas. I mean, they all have different ideas. They're all youth and they're all young people, but as you said, they're not stupid. They can come up with their own ideas. And like yeah. I said in the video, I've made it a very big part of my ministry. And it's not just a minister, but any teacher. It should be, don't regurgitate what I say. Get inspired, research it, and make it your own. You decide for yourself. So I do give my ideas, um, like very, very basic ideas. If the youth comes up to me and wants to get into a deep discussion, I'll pull them up to my level and I'll be like, yeah, this is what I think about things. These are my ideas. Um, it's not gospel, but this is, you know, the way that I perceive things. And as you've seen, those things change. Yeah. But, when it, when it, but I know it sounds like I'm dancing around the issues, but when it comes down to it, yes, you know, I do believe in Jesus Christ. And I do believe that he's a divine. And they come to youth group. So I know some of them are dragged there, but a lot of them come and they enjoy it. So they're there because they want to be there, and they want to hear about Jesus, and I don't deny them that. Mm -hmm. But do you see how uh, reinforcing one part of the Bible story that they know reinforces the whole thing? Like, it, it would remind them about the whole thing? Like, reinforcing... By just telling them that Jesus gave them a gift of salvation, they they would know why, you know, he had to die. Well, see, this is this is where I think I think I I am assuming here. Mm -hmm. We're stepping out. I'm stepping out on assumption. But I'm assuming that maybe, maybe you, or maybe a lot of other atheists, have had so much experience with, if you do not accept Jesus, you will burn forever in hell. Mm -hmm. And there are other alternatives to that. There is, as I said in the video, an idea of universal salvation, where God came down and paid this sacrifice for all of sin. Yes. So that... And I'm going off the cuff here, I don't have anything written. I, I understand so, that, that, that there are different ideas about, like, what hell is. I mean, Catholics have purgatory for, you know, minor sinners, you know. And there, there's all sorts of ideas about, like, it's not really painful, it's just distance from God. I've, I've heard those ideas. But what those yeah, ideas I, I don't address, it. really, is that the, the sin is magically stuck to you like a, a tar, like a goop that you can't see, you know, and, and that uh, you need to be cleansed of it. And, and well, that and you're that way you before you even I'm knew sorry. that you were sinning. You know, the, Jesus died before you even were born, 
So, you know, you you were part of this contract well before you were even thought of by your parents. Okay, well, you don't even have to be a Christian to believe in sin, as long as you believe in negativity or as in something that is wrong. Um, the idea that Jesus Christ saved us from our sins could be the very same idea that a person who was addicted to drugs is saved by the AA program, or that an atheist who is thinking way A gets saved and realizes that way A is wrong and takes up way B. So, yes, we might differ on what city, because, you know, I have a belief in the divine and you do not, but being an atheist doesn't necessarily mean that... Oh, no! I dropped... I dropped Fitch. I'm going to call him right back. If he doesn't call me. Hello. Okay. You're, you're telling me that it's freezing cold? This is Colorado Springs. There's these giant mountains out my window right there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, man. They're covered in snow, too. There's no snow here, actually. It's, it's just cold and damp, but it's actually not in the snow. So, you can't yeah. see this, but I'm about to pull a, an electric blanket over me. <laughs> because, um, because of how cold it is. Uh, not really. I, I'm still uh, pretty much talking to the same fucktards. <laughs> you know, so yeah. you guys help me out. Okay. You're keeping me grounded. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me let me do one last thing. Just light my cigar here. Cigar. I wish the camera was on your end now. <laughs> okay. So, uh, it took a few minutes for you to, like, get get back with me, and uh, I forgot where you were. Yeah. Um, where did you leave off? That, the, the phone died, and then my computer did, like, a security reboot. So then yeah. I went looking for a charger, get final. But anyway... What I was saying when it cut out was, um, not being a Christian mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you don't have an idea, and if you and not being a Christian who teaches things about life does not mean that you don't have an, an idea of sin or a thing that is in us that needs to change. We just call it something differently. I'm not arguing that it's the exact same thing, but it's really, really similar. Now, um, now I'm going to... I'm sure you... I'm sure you would agree that uh, in psychology you would teach that there are things about us that are destructive, that are negative, and we need salvation, if you will, from them. There are things about us that are bad sometimes. We are not necessarily bad people, but some people do have things about them that need to change, maybe some obsessions, maybe now, whatever. Now, not being not part of your religion... I actually do not believe some things that you would actually take for granted that I would believe. I don't believe that being wrong is uh, magically negative, and I don't even believe that we have souls within us. You know, that's right. something that that Christians sometimes take for granted. Hold on, I'm going to turn off that. That's going to be an edit. Well, see, I, I left Blog TV on, and uh, Arsenic Cigarettes came on, and I guess it resets the, the volume, because I had it muted, 
And sorry, arsenic cigarettes, if I don't edit this, and you actually hear that I heard your voice and I and I shut off Blog TV. But we're talking here, you know. Right. You're talking to to Charles, you know. Oh, there's my alarm that says the sun's gonna come up, and and I need to hide because I'm a I'm a vampire atheist. You know. Baby eating vampire, blood sucking. I don't know. It's four in the morning. Yeah, it's very early. Very yeah. early. So. I don't believe that we have souls. And, and right. there's like all these uh, teachings, like sin, that I feel like Christians take for granted that we, we already believe. Like. Uh, right. For instance, they'll say, like, you already have this feeling inside of you that you know God exists. I don't, you know. And sin is one of those things. I don't feel like I was wrong before I did something wrong. I only feel like I, I did something wrong after I did something wrong. Right. But it's wrong. Or at least you perceive it to be wrong in some way. Like, if you, if you went out and shot your neighbor, you would perceive it to be wrong. Not yeah. saying there's an objective morality, but you would say that that type of behavior was wrong and would need to be corrected. Um, and it originated from within yourself. I, I would believe that shooting my neighbor would be wrong, but uh, what type of correction I would think would be... Uh, appropriate would not be anything magical you know well, let me, let me, I think this it'd is be called the police <laughs> you know this is a point that was brought to me actually by an atheist so I am borrowing her logic mm -hmm. her name was Miss Marte or something uh, I should send you a link to her channel I think I have this very video favorited because she definitely deserves a subscription she okay, it, to it, a Christian it, chat room that I've been to a lot if she, if she, if you send me her name, I'll like annotate her somewhere in this video, okay. and then like people will know that's who you were talking about. Okay, mm. she uh was actually criticizing the Christians because in this chat room late at night, there would be some maybe some lonely people, some people dealing with depression, some people who had problems, and she did this little bit, and I'm summarizing and get quick. You know, she asked who was really helping. Was it the person who read a Bible scripture? You have this problem, but hey, don't worry. You know, because Luke 14, 14 says this. Was it the person who said, "Well, don't worry, I'll take prayer for you. I'll pray for you." Um, okay, I have to back up. She said, "You know, this person was bleeding. Who is helping? Is it the person who reads the scripture? Is it the person who, you know, prays for him?" Or who's helping the person that says, okay, let me take your hand, let me clean it, let me get a band-aid, put a band-aid on your wound, and, you know, get all these health things. Who is actually helping the bleeding person? And the answer is, the only person who was actually really helping that person who was bleeding was a third person. It was the only person who was actually helping. The other two people, they had a good intent. They thought they were helping but they actually weren't doing anything. And I think that to be a Christian isn't to do the first two things. To do what, to help other people, to fight sin or evil or destructive behavior or whatever you want to call it, um, that's a, and it's, it's its own discussion, is to do the third thing. You're having problems with depression. Fuck, psychiatrist. You are, uh, you know, there's poverty. Uh, we can do something and, and, you know, help solve this problem or something like that. I think that doing the Lord's work is the third option, is giving the person that band mm -hmm. I don't think that necessarily praying is going to necessarily um, make a change in an external world. It makes a change in the self, but I don't believe that it necessarily make the change in the external world and I speak as an uneducated person who still has a lot to learn on that subject but I think that that's where like 
you know, into a trouble. If there are a lot of conceptions about Christianity um, that I may not necessarily agree with. Um, and I think it, it unintentionally straw man a lot. Um, because I'm not saying that, okay, if you have problems, we're going to get together and hold, all your problems will go away. We're going to get together, and if you, have, if you have a problem and you come up to me, I'm going to find the best solution for you that I know possible because I love you and because I want to help you and because my faith tells me to love everyone and to try to do that which is best and right for everyone, whatever that is. So that is kind of, that kind of sums up the youth ministry right there. And I was shamed by that because it wasn't a Christian that taught me that. It wasn't atheist. Her name was like, you know, I've actually heard of uh, a study that said that uh, when a patient in, in uh, palliative care, where they they know they're terminal, and they're they're just giving them medicine to ease their pain before they die, any. A patient in palliative care or in hospice is actually worse off if people come to pray for them. Really? Yes, because uh, the the uh, meetings for prayer, it, you know, uh, it basically reminds them of their mortality, and the people who have their minds kept off of their terminal situation actually fare better as far as. Uh, you know, living longer. Oh, wow, that's interesting. You know, prayer can bring a lot of anxiety if, if you know that they're praying for you, you know. Right. So. Can't cite this over the phone right now to you, but, like, I could probably, if I come back to this video that we're making, I can, like, leave a, a link in the description. Okay. Yeah, she did a good job. But yeah, it's just another example of uh, prayer not actually doing <laughs> what it's meant to be doing. Well, I mean, I don't know much about science, so like, I'll kind of say I think I could totally be wrong. Well, I do I think I have read somewhere that prayer or meditation, like the brain, I don't know if I remember this right, but the brain normally admits like alpha waves or something, and that when a person goes into meditation, the brain solves out like beta waves or delta waves or something like that. Um, I'm not really going to talk too much more on it because I just read it really quickly. I haven't really studied it or anything. But, you know, I do know that prayer changes the self, at least meditation certainly does. I was interested in Buddhism for a little while, mm. and uh, I remember it would change your mood. It would you would be angry, and then not even just through Buddhism, but also in Christianity, it's prayer and focusing on releasing negativity it does change the self. Um, whether I'm going to pray for a million bucks, I don't think it necessarily works like that. But it does, I do believe, just from my own experience, that it changes the self. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's not biblical. Because biblically, you know, you would pray for something external to happen. Yeah. You know, that's my experience. My experience is one thing. You know, I, I mean, and I'm, I know you're not supposed to go 100% on your experience, but it is a large part of the way I think. But mm -hmm. biblically, you know, you know, you pray for the sun to stop, and it stops. So you have to keep an eye on how much of this is legend and things like that. Yeah. Or, I mean, I well, don't know, maybe biblically, it does happen externally. Go ahead. Bib biblically, I know that if you have two piles of sticks and and somebody says, well, I'm going to pray to the Christian God and and I'm not going to use any flint or steel or, or anything else, and then this, this pile of sticks is going to catch on fire... And you pray to your God on your pile of sticks, and we'll see who gets caught on fire, and then right. and, and we can test God that way. That that's what I know biblically. But uh, uh, outside of the Bible, you know, I 
any any kind of test that I ever want to say, either in, in real life to Christians or on YouTube, people are always quick to remind me that uh, thou shalt not test the Lord le thy God, even though right. he gets tested in the Bible. And, uh, yeah, so, right. like, I'm, I'm not supposed to ask for some kind of physical change in this yeah. world. Right, right. Yeah, you're not, you're not supposed to be like, I have sets of friends who were Wiccans, mm. and I actually, on my channel, I have, like, you have your favorites, and you have, like, your sub-favorites, I have a sub-favorite category called Wicca, and I have this whole bunch of Wiccans talking about the way they see things, which will totally freak out all my Christian subscribers, but... I do have it, and I, you know, watch some of these videos, and the way they see things is very interesting, because mm -hmm. when they approach prayer, they think that if you send out any negativity, or any, and selfish is a part of neg selfishness is a part of negativity, that comes back to you three times. Now, I don't agree with a lot of the theology, but mm -hmm. some of that might be true in Christianity. When we pray out of selfish need, mm -hmm. or something like that, uh, it's not necessarily what it's supposed to be about. Like you said, you're not supposed to test God. You know, God do this. Yeah. However, like like you've noticed, there are stories kind of like that. So I mean, I well, know you hate hearing I, this. But I know from I from watching the Blue Fire Witch that uh, it it it's very hard to find an authoritative text on witchcraft. Um, right, the Blue right. Fire Witch, uh, she's in my subscriptions, and and I I've watched some of her stuff, and, and I've known other Wiccans before. But I know that in the Bible, you know, the, there there seems to be a double standard where whereas it applies to me, because you know I remember uh, doubting Thomas, needing proof before he could believe, and I remember Paul being blinded, you know, and, and if I were to pray in earnest, hey, I need some proof here because, you know, if not. I'm I'm just going to stay an atheist, you know. Right. That proof doesn't happen for me. And th this is completely outside of people telling me whether or not it's right to pray for that proof. You know, I have done that in earnest, and, and it seems like what's in the Bible isn't working out for me in real life. Um, my only reaction to that, my only honest actual reaction to is you haven't had an experience where you prayed to God and you said, God, if you're real, show me. And if you did not have any experience in being atheist, what am I going to tell you? You did it wrong? What am I going to tell you, you know, God didn't show up or something? I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. I have my experience, which something did happen. I wasn't there. So I my experience. Take your experience in mind and think about it. It changes the way that I think of things, and it's interesting. But at the end of the day, I mean, that's your experience. I, I, don't, I don't know why that didn't happen. I can tell you why you didn't find what you were looking for. I don't know what you were looking for. And I'm not crying, I'm just really... But, uh, Are you cold? I mean... <laughs> Okay, we'll, we'll try to try to talk clearer. You're kind of breaking up. Oh, so can you hear? Kind of breaking up. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Is it like a connection thing? Yeah, it, it might have been. Okay. So here, here's what I I want to tell you on that. Right. Is that, um. As skeptics, guys like me and, and Mega Cheppo, we actually don't uh, trust our own experiences uh, if we cannot validate them with other people. You know what I'm saying? Like, the only things that we trust as fact are the things that we can, we can validate. We can test again and again. And so if we have an experience 
and we can't make that experience happen again for ourselves, you know, that's one way of, of validating. But like, if we can't get somebody else to experience the same thing, you know, completely independent of us, you know, that says that the common denominator in any time that it was validated is us. Right. And, and that would tell us that there's something wrong here. Well, I mean, my response to that would be if you have 50 people who haven't experienced it, 50 people who don't, I mean, who's right? Yeah. You know, you have 50 atheists who don't have the experience. Well, that means there's no experience. You're talking to people who have had the experience, and they've had it, so they're like, how can you not, how can you not believe that we've had this experience? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's why I'm not really commenting on it, because I don't know what it's like to not have that experience. I don't know what that's like. So, I can't comment on something that I, it's not in my experience. I don't know what that's like. From within me, it probably freak you out or whatever. I feel bad. You probably don't. I mean, but I wish everybody could have that experience. I wish that I had the button to press. But, and it's a part of human tragedy. It's a part of Christian tragedy. It's a part of the minister tragedy that we don't have that button. The button that just presses, pre press it and say, okay, here's your proof. Here, here's your experience. Here's yeah. Well, you can't help me out with that experience, but maybe you could help me out with this. I was wondering if turtles might have a really pretty sister who who isn't maybe afflicted with being Canadian. Like one on one on this side of the border, maybe. Yeah. If uh, I don't think she does, but okay. you know. She had a lot of cousins. Ah. A lot of cousins. She had a ton of cousins. Okay. Did you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that was good enough, so I'll put in a word for some of her French cousins. Okay, good looking out, man. No problem. Okay, you take care, and, and get some sleep, and, and maybe curl up under a blanket. Because <laughs> it's cold. I'm going to bed. All right, see you later, man. All right, bye.